Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Production! Hello, class. Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, we're taking a look at my banless prediction or somewhat what I wish the banners would be. I think these do somewhat fall in line. A few of those are definitely more copium, but of all, this is what my wish banners would be. And I could also like nine out of 10 out of these hits, I can assume would be on the actual banners once it comes out. So without further ado, don't forget to seal pass on the subscribe button, leave some comments and some feedback down below and let's get right into the video. So here we have my beautifully prepared uh, banners thingy. Uh, these are not as big as them, but let's ignore this on the wild. So for my first, Hit on the forbidden list being actually forbidden is a rice heart. I think Kashira has been meta for long enough, and I think with a rice heart ban and maybe even put Unicorn back to three or give it some more love to be more of like Unicorn Fenric control deck, the deck still ha will have a niche in the meta just because the the way the engine works, um, it has a very good ratio to non-engine to engine, and it can still definitely perform even without an rise out if the overall power level of the format is low enough, in my opinion. Just being able to play like 18 non-engine slots and then loop Fenrir is definitely a win condition by itself. Next slot is Virus. I think a lot of people are sick of Virus. I'm not that opposed to it, but uh, in my opinion, Labyrinth does need a hit if you hit everything else. And Virus just makes the most sense just because it is definitely a toxic card, but it's definitely like a a high rolly card and your losers will feel even harder with it uh, just giving you no chance and the way labyrinth can abuse this card is just not healthy even though it doesn't come up all too often the amount of times it does come up it's just way too unfair in my opinion then we have hot red dragon archfiend calamity uh, just a preemptive hit to all of the new stuff so that they don't go for the completely unfair shit this card is definitely an auto win if you get it out on the opponent's turn. There's very little you can do once the opponent has the setup or, uh, available. So it just comes down to drawing enough hand traps to stop them. So overall, I don't like this card. And I think if there is um, a way to hit the new things, it definitely is this card. And let the new things with the new level 12 dragon, stuff like that, um, play with some more fair cards and some more fair payoffs. Lastly, this is probably the copium part. Hopefully Shifter gets banned. I don't see them doing it because if they wanted to hit Shifter, they should have done it before. But uh, in a similar vein to a Rise Heart, um, this just bullies out so much out of the meta. Uh, it is kind of unfair. Maybe they're overkilling it and they sh maybe should leave the Shifter for Kashtira so it can be like this anti-meta uh, Flunder type deck, which doesn't really use its extra deck. But overall... I think this card definitely should go if it will ever happen. Who the fuck knows? And in similar vein, to give some graveyard decks uh, uh, some love, uh, I think Magnemon will go to one. Uh, definitely a uh, very strong card, and it should probably go to one. Definitely fine for Dragon Link, as the world banlist has shown, but this card is way too good. And with that, I think there will be another Dragon Link hit. Uh, I will just put Lebel in here because it makes the most sense, because the OCG already did it, but it could be more bestials limited, even safer to one could be a very interesting hit to force the deck to be a little less recursive uh, and make certain lines with um, this Pater reviving a safer which you use in your own turn already more um, attractive for one. But overall, there will probably be two limits for Dragon Link, maybe even three, and they will limit all the bestials apart from Serenia, just like they did in the OCG. Then we have Pot of Prosperity, another way to hit Labyrinth without actually hitting it. Um, this card is just way too good uh, right now with the amount of power non-engine slots have. Uh, think of stuff like Dark Ruler, Evenly, this Auto Win going second blowout cards and Prosperity having a, such a high likelihood of seeing either of them. And then when going first, you can uh, dig for non-engine or you can dig for engine depending on what your hand needs. And I think this card is just way too strong. And if you compare it to an Extravagance or a Pot of Desires especially. Then we have Runic Tip. By the way, sorry for some crop outs. Uh, you, sometimes I just had very bad pictures for these, for example. So the crop out didn't work out as fine. But yeah, Runic, probably not the best call in the next meta, in the next format, just because the next format asks for more than six non engine slots. And you probably want to be at like at least nine. And Runic does struggle with that a little bit. But definitely, Runic Tip is such a broken card. And a slight tap to the deck is definitely needed, in my opinion, especially if you had everything else like we are doing here. And then we have 
skill drain to one another reason uh, another thing to hit lab with just because labyrinth does need a few tabs here and there and i think with like these tabs it definitely puts uh, labyrinth onto the uh, furniture variant because the furniture variant didn't really want prosperity or maybe like one uh, prosperity just for consistency and skill drain while it was very good in that deck you don't need it and ever since skill drain came back to three it's been a broken card it just got kept in check by brave engine like being the the go-to thing for most of the format and then afterwards tier elements where they had a very easy time outing it with Pearl Lino. But Skill Drain has been broken ever since. And it's just the most generic Floodgate which you can always main deck and will always perform. Other than like goes and Rivalries, there can only be one. Whereas sometimes they are just that. Skill Drain will always be annoying for the opponent to deal with. So this card should go to one. And it should be banned. But let's be real, it probably will go to, uh, go to one again. And then lastly, like a double hit, you can see I think... They should probably do something about Purely, but if they hit just Sleepy to 1 and Delicious stays at 1 as well, the deck is basically dead. And that would be super unfair because the deck never really had a chance to shine here in the TCG. So I think they put should put Sleepy to 1 and then should put a Delicious to 3. Maybe they will do a 2-2, two -two, uh, so you are not guaranteed to any of them. But overall, the draw 4 or draw 6 combo is way too broken with this tower. Um, basically making it borderline impossible to out it um, and then keep up in a grind game and then you basically have to OTK them which is really hard through like two to three hand traps if one of them is nip for example. Um, so I still think Sleepy should go to one and then Delicious to three. Maybe it will go only go to two, who will see. But I definitely think Sleepy has to get limited just because the draw is way too strong. And then another unhit, it's probably Gazelle. Uh, they've put a shit ton of fire monsters out and gave Salaman Great some support. So this card should definitely go to three. Uh, Misk could probably go to three again. And Dragon, uh, Dragon, sorry, Dinos probably wouldn't do too much. Maybe it will only go, go to two and they will see. Uh, I, as you can see, I completely skip over the two department because it basically doesn't matter for me. A lot of the cards which could come to two could also probably come to three. And... Similar to Misk, uh, it, maybe it will only come to 2, maybe they'll put it back to 3 immediately, who knows. But I don't think Dino is doing what it wants to do, just because the way the deck works now, if you ask Ash the Misk effect in Graveyard, the turn is so much harder for them to play. The new support, the Xenos uh, thingy, Xeno, Xeno, something Xeno, uh, like which pops a baby in hand, is another way to extend through that. But other than that, they don't really have an extender if the miss gets Ash, so it's it should be fine, probably. And then lastly, this is Spellbook of Judgment. There's no good Spellbook of Judgment artwork uh, online, so we'll have to figure with that. Yeah, but they put Judgment to 1, they probably will put it to 2 or to 3, and the deck would probably not do anything. And I think that it is for my Bandless prediction. What I would hope for the Bandless to be, actually, is just all of these hits, and maybe Delicious to 2, but I don't know, I didn't... Um, Think about it that much and I didn't play the deck um, that much to know if uh, like two would be enough but I definitely want the deck to be playable just because it would be super unfair but what I would want is actually part of Desire Store 3. I don't think they would do it so this is why I don't have it here but Desire Store 3 would be a very good um, compensation for uh, Prosperity to one because similar to Kashtira a lot of decks which can play Prosperity can also play Desires. Um, think of Sprite, think of Kashtira. So that could be a very cool thing to put those deck more into like a very controlled card advantage based playstyle and uh, compared to this very uh, flat gave, uh, flat head flat compared to that floodgate heavy um, playstyle, especially Kashira has right now. So that's it for my bandless prediction. Definitely let me know uh, if those predictions you think are good. If what else would you think would get hit? What am I completely wrong about? Definitely let me know in the script in the description down below. Without further ado. Class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Sunrise out. P -p -p Peace.